This is Bank 13, WTVT, Tampa, St. Petersburg, and it's time now for the Pulse News, the afternoon report. Tuesday, March 26th, 1957, 1 o'clock report. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Peter Wigg, and today is what's happening. Dan Cupid went out over a natural beauty contest yesterday. Love Trump and the National Press Photographers Association lost a likely queen candidate when it was learned that St. Petersburg's bond sun got us in 1955. Or Alice? Thomas and boyfriend Phil Phipps have been married somewhere in Georgia. This prince of the youthful couple, both 18 years old on the eve of her scheduled trip to Washington, D.C., has raised a flurry of conjecture hair over this weekend. At 5.45 p.m. Saturday, the young couple entered Phipps' car in their formal town, drove away. When they failed to return, police were notified and then a search started for the attractive St. Petersburg High School senior and Phipps who works at a father's service station. The Florida West Coast press photographers were a bit out of this one, my brain. Film yesterday as less quit. In January, they selected Alice Thomas as the Sun Coast representative. Net. I'll pass. Right now. So, no contest at a Miss National Press Photographer contest to be held in Washington tonight. Okay. But he'll open and report their marriage to their number one choice on it, even the contest left them high and dry. Contest reels call for an unmarried girl, 1825, with one beautiful photographer put it yesterday. No divorce is no nothing. Okay. And that's been an attempt was being made last night and entered. Darlene Johnson, a runner up to Miss Thomas last January, the 20 year old Safety Harbor girl at University of Florida, Mary Dritt, will be likely contender as she was a maid of honor in the 1955 Miss Dixie Contest, maid of honor in the 1955 Leesburg Watermelon Festival. The United States followed it up its premier decision to make guided missiles available to Britain and with a report that it will do the same for France, but it will be some time before any of them are in operation, even if the United States. Times editor noted that the decision on the missiles was one of the main results of the Bermuda, but they may require congressional action to carry out. Washington. President Eisenhower was reported to have discussed with Democratic Republican congressional leaders yesterday at the possible assignment of U.S. guided missiles to France. That word came from Senator Henning in Democrat of Missouri, and whenever a sizable group invited her to the White House from the Capitol to hear Eisenhower report on his Bermuda conference with Mitt. Mr. Prime Minister Harold Macmillan of Great Britain. One of the major and announced results of the conference was an Anglo-American agreement in principle that certain guided missiles would be made available by the United States for the use by British forces. Rome. Leaders of the six West European nations last night signed the common market and European treaties which bind 160 million people into an economic union. Eventually they could create a new world power. It took top statesmen of West Germany, France, Italy, Belgium, Holland and Luxembourg only a few minutes to sign the treaties but expects figures that it will take 12 to 17 years to adjust national economies to put them in effect. Even then, there was an if. Their two treaties still must be ratified by the parliaments of the Six Nations. Some diplomats still wonder whether France may back out at the last minute as she did in an ill fated plan to form a West European army. The documents pledged the six governments to put the common market on your Tom. European Atomic Agency treats these in effect in as quickly as possible. If the two history making treaties are brought in effect, they would tear down customs barriers and trade quarters from the North Sea to Adriatic. Permit free exchange of labor, capital, and goods among the Six Nations. Set these nations apart as a new bulk with a single tariff on the goods from outside forming an economic union that could compete with the world's big powers and pull the Six Nations resources for the development of peacetime atomic energy. The calendar may say spring, but winter not going down with that fight as a spring blizzard which isolated small communities fought the Great Plains, stolen passenger trains and automobiles and snow drifts to 20 feet fear toward the Great Lakes yesterday with a northeastward word trap. West Coast County Lily 17 dead as skies began clearing beyond the storm, enabling them to reach snowbound motorists. A buckling foreign stranded the passengers aboard one of the trains that were stopped were removed by school buses in western Kansas. Forecasters said the worst of the storm was over. However, additional Accumulations of snow were expected in southeastern Iowa, northeastern Missouri, northern Illinois, southeastern Wisconsin, southern lower Michigan, northern Indiana, and extreme north of Ohio. Washington. Teams with President Dave Beck slipped into town yesterday, and as lawyer said he was doing possibly, will show up today for long delayed questioning by Senate Labor Rec investigators. Yesterday, former Senator James H. Steph, Republican of Pennsylvania, said there's no doubt about it. Any reports to be contrary are complete punk. But he declined to say whether the fast talk in union chief will bring him on. His personal financial records requested by the Senate Records Committee. Committee Counsel Robert F. Kennedy said Beck had submitted a statement which he would wait at today's hearing, but he would not have voted to come. Tens of the statement. Kennedy also told that David W. Sheverman, Chicago Labor Relations Consultant, which is a friend of Beck, might be called to testify later in the week. Kennedy said during recent hearings that the $20,068 in tips of funds went into Sheverman's bank account.
Bex and Penn and the appearance before the committee consent with Benson and Texan and his union stewardship from AFL CIO officials and demands from congressional quotas that let's lay to the curb abuses of union funds. Washington. The Supreme Court yesterday dealt a blow to Virginia's policy of massive resistance to racial integration in its public schools. With a minimum of words, the court rejected eight to nothing of Virginia's appeals from orders of lower federal courts and joined in the enforcement of racial segregation in Shotsville and Arlington County. Treating the appeals as routine as possible, the courts grouped them with 23 others in its list of orders and merely said that it's all to them the petition for writs of certainer. In these cases are severely denied. Shotsville in the central part of the state is the on the University of Virginia, Arlington County, just across the Panama River from Washington is publicly held by government workers and service personnel. The court emphasized again its policy of giving lower courts wide discretion to bring about the segregation with all deliberate speed as ordered by May 1955. It did so by refusing to review orders of lower courts tonight and the many admissions of Negro children in Old Fort, North Carolina, to our white school. Attorney General Jay Lindsay Allman, now a candidate for the Democratic nomination of Governor of Virginia, occurred the Chartsville and Arlington appeals to the Supreme Court. In both cases, the United States Court reveals that the Fourth Circuit affirmed orders of district judges directly ending the segregation. Judge Albert B. Bryant ordered Arlington Elementary Schools desegregated as of last January 1st and high schools by next September. Judge John Paul Char. Let's build schools ordered by Judge John Paul desegregated as of last September. Both of these orders have been held in demand pending exhaustion of appeals procedures. Virginia now has 25 days in which to petition the Supreme Court to consider this refusal to review the two cases. Washington, the Supreme Court ruled 6-1 yesterday that the government cannot keep secret an identity of an undercover informer if they end the day becomes relevant and helpful to the defendant in a criminal trial. Justice Clark, who descended to the didn't mind finding himself alone, but he expressed regret that he had been able to convince the majority of the unsoundness of the conclusion. The decision written by Justice Burton overturned a narcotics law conviction of Chicago, and who protested that John Doe informant was neither invited nor called to testify at his trial. Clark said he had felt the decision would have a destructive effect on the enforcement of narcotics laws. He, talk, but he wasn't dealing with a confused teenager that he could manipulate and charm. London attempts to settle Britain's nationwide shipyard strike broke down last night and the government stepped in. It will set up a court of inquiry to deal with the unions and their employers. Right and McLeod, Minister of Labor, appealed to the unions to call for the 10-day old strike, which inquiry goes on. The deadlock between the bosses and the unions shattered hopes for a speedy end to the spread and industry of people undermining Britain's economy. The unions rejected 5% wage increase offered by employers in day long talks. Union officials said that the strike of 200,000 workers are continuing. The union has asked for a 10% hike. McLeod said that the independent court of inquiry will go to work with a minimum of delay. It can make recommendations for selling the dispute, but its verdict is not binding. Fort Lauderdale. The Spring Tide of College students have undenated Fort Lauderdale again, bringing the problems for the police and complaints that the youngsters, that some hotels and motels are overchanging them. Police Chief Jay Lesterholt said some of the thousands of students are drinking too much and giving us patrolmen trouble. Fort Lauderdale, a city with a population of about 65,000, has more than doubled its police force to cope with the students than its pit officers and 16 hour ships. About 5,000 students are in town now, with another 4,000 expected before the spring holidays end. No one knows why the colleges have selected Fort Lauderdale for their Easter vacation, but they've been coming here for seven years and increasing numbers. PR. Police Chief Jay Lester Holt says that the students aren't committing any major crimes. It's a drink that bothers, he said. Nearly a dozen students have already been arrested for intoxication. Night clubs, liquor stores, and bar rooms are carrying on intensive campaigns for student business and they are getting the biggest out of their money, Holt said. A good many pranks have been blamed on the students in past years. These include the swiping of a city bus, which later was found abandoned in the tossing of a six foot hammer shot into the swimming pool of a luxury hotel and a smearing of a city water tower with red paint. On the side, some of the students are complaining about being overcharged by the innkeepers. The Florida Hotel and Restaurant Commission has sent investigators to check in to the protest and will keep them on duty until the vacation period is over. New York. The time has come when a group of social scientists have agreed yesterday to pay more attention to the pop. There's been too much emphasis. That the Child Study Association of the America was told on the implication of growing importance of women. So much self-consciousness has arisen, reported Dr. Jenner Roach to the annual convention that the men and women are blocked in the spontaneous behavior. Liberal Kansas. Morale was reported high yesterday among stranded passengers aboard a snowbound Rock Island train near here, but many were suffering headaches, chills, nausea from carbon monoxide fumes. First weather situation at the eastbound Golden State Limited came from Mr. and Mrs. Edward Tubbs of South Bend, Indiana. Body by a Navy helicopter and rescue doctor orders. Tubbs suffers from a heart ailment. 
Mr. Tubbs told of eight passengers who passed out in the lunch car yesterday morning in front of the fumes. Two train pilots of a private plane set up a makeshift shuttle service between Liberal and the train near Meade, Kansas to supply passengers with a train crew with necessities. The train found that the passengers unlimited were under a doctor's care. All aboard had been without food, water, or heat until the two Liberal flyers started their volunteer ferry service. <sighs> All out of the weather after this commercial break here on Pulse News Afternoon Report. Stay tuned. I do not trust her. I never will. But I'm really cool like sisters. You know, the only problem between you is Adam. He's no longer an issue, so I think this is your chance to be friends again. How are we supposed to be friends again, Lily? For our economy, speed and dependably, we fly Eastern Air Coach. 50 million passengers, phone Eastern, world leader in air coach service, fly the world's most dependable airliners. Now, it's a low cost air coach at New York. $41.50, Chicago nonstop, $42.40, Detroit nonstop, $45.70. St. Louis, $36. Louisville, $30.30. Atlanta, nonstop, $17.40. Boston, $49.70. Washington, $33.80. And Jacksonville, $10.90. From Tampa, all fares plus tax. 